All right, so we are here with uh, Jennifer McElfresh. She is the owner of uh, Energize Wellness. Uh, they help with uh, men and women's hormones and rejuvenation, uh, everything from Botox to um, obviously, you know, the peptides and the um, hormone treatments to um, you even do What's the bag of stuff that you had flowing in? IV me? therapy. IV so, therapy. yes, okay. a Myers cocktail. Myers cocktail. Yes. Yeah. I don't know, man. I think that thing should be renamed Mojo Cocktail I after know. I got a hold of that thing. It was incredible. That's crazy. I felt so good. I felt like I just like wanted to like get out there and like run a couple miles and, you know, just it, it was it was a total game changer. I don't know if I was just like lacking in vitamins or nutrients or right. something, but I legit felt a total difference. And you know, I freak out, like I'll set like a bottle of vitamins up on the shelf for like two weeks and then I'll like psych myself out to not take those vitamins. And then finally I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll take the vitamin, yes. you know, and then I'm like totally fine. But it's like an anxiety. I just, you know, I don't like trying new things, that kind of stuff. So like when you're like, Hey, we're just going to put this in to your vein and it's going to go throughout your body <laughs> and, and then, be energized. Well, now I'm, yeah, now I'm like totally a, a believer. believer, but, um, I also wanted to be able to add that you are a woman owned company and that you are a former Naval veteran as well. So talk to me, let me get just kind of right into the, the, you know, meat and potatoes here. Right. So, um, talk to me a little bit about, how that has gone for you, you know, in, in starting a business, especially nowadays, it's very difficult. But, you know, would you say that also women in business, it's, like, has that been anything that has been, um, you know, positive or negatives? Tell me a little bit about that. Yes. So thank you first for yeah. having me here. It's an <laughs> honor and a privilege. I value you as a mentor and a friend. And oh, thank you. it's very cool Likewise. that we're doing this yeah. and Mr. Insurance. So <laughs> thanks. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So over the years, as you know, people have been in my ear. You know, you're so great at what you do. You know, I I value your education and the way you treat me more than I go into my primary care. Like, I trust you. You take the time to educate me. I feel comfortable and confident. And, But, you know, having small children as a single mom, I was always on the fence. You know, I like to give 100%. And I felt like I was going to spread myself too thin in every direction, either not be there for the kiddos or not be able to give my patients 100%. So I hung tight, kept educating myself and kept just growing, you know, my knowledge base in the field. And in this industry, which is the wave of the future, wellness is going, I mean, I, our healthcare industry is going to change completely because we know now, and I just went to a conference this weekend, which was exciting to learn all kinds of these highly motivated doctors that have stepped out of traditional medicine and gone into like, what are we doing here? You know, the third leading cause of death in the United States right now is medical error. Yeah. Who would have thought? So we, as we're learning in Western medicine, we're actually like killing people. So the big mover and shaker that 10 Health I was telling you about, he was a biologist that spent 22 years in the life insurance business. His job was a mortality expert. So his whole role was to study you, get your medical records, open them, see your laboratory work and what medications you're on, and he can predict when you will expire. Yeah. That data was then given to insurance companies. So that's crazy to me. Like, we aren't here, like, trying to figure out what's wrong with people. Why aren't you living your best life anymore? It's more about, okay, and that's how we're taught in school, Western medicine. This is how a patient's going to present in their disease state, and these are the big pharma drugs you're going to give them. Well, I think that there's also a stigma that's around specifically testosterone. Um, but then you lead, I think that that kind of carries into the peptides as well too is that that's like the no-go zone or like you know Absolutely. you're you're just this roid popping fool if you're taking that stuff or whatever but if you had something that made you feel better look better 
and you know was was giving you a better cognitive type of result why would you not do that if you have the technology available to you to like they the semi glutide which is the ozempic stuff right Correct. if you have the technology to help you to be able to lose the weight i think a lot of people really don't understand that your hormones play every bit of the factor your gut health plays every bit of the factor into making all these these things happen in your body like i used to tell people all the time because you know i have a gut for a lot of times you know um and you know right so people be like oh man just eat better so i could literally eat like salad leaves and grapes and it would be no different i you know go on to uh the therapy and i've been on and off of it i've gone to different various places um you know and the one thing that has been a determining factor for me with working with you, because I'm obviously a patient too, right? Yes. So um, the one thing with working with you is exactly kind of like what you described is it's not really like going to a doctor's office. It's like going and having a visit with mom and, <laughs> you know, like, what can we do to help you? You know, like you're very in tune, very engaged into the the helping of a customer it's not about money it's not about praise it's not about anything other than you are a truly giving person that wants to see this person have better results and what a lot of people don't understand about the hormone therapy is when we're all going to get old like we don't have a choice we're going to get old and we're going to die but i'm going to look damn good doing it <laughs> right. right so you know i'm not afraid to say like i get botox or Brotox, Bro right? Brotox, correct. right? It's the more correct version, right? <laughs> I get that. I take peptide therapy. I take hormone therapy. And these things we've had to adjust along the way. And I've fallen off the bandwagon and gotten back on the bandwagon, gained weight, lost weight. You know, we've had <clears throat> all kinds of scenarios with that. But in each of these different things, you feel very protected, very monitored and in a safe environment what people don't understand is it's about your quality of life it's about how you feel at the end of the day because how you feel you know it's like Deion sanders says all the time your if you favorite. look good you feel good correct if you feel good you play good if you play good you get paid good correct right so and when people look at somebody in a professional environment and i'm going to relate this to insurance and any other career too you look at a person that's in really, really good shape and you're like, wow, you know, like this person is a mom, this person, um, you know, is a business uh, man or woman or, you know, whatever it is. And there's like a, I don't know, like there's a, a respect that's there. So I had seen myself, I had done this conference down in Dallas, Texas here like a couple months ago, and I had seen myself on TV and I was like, oh my gosh, I look like I'm like seven months pregnant because we're our hardest critics on each other, right? Correct. So I'm like, I'm going to hit the gym. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I've been doing that. But we started ramping up some of the different therapies and helping uh, uh, with like the weight loss peptides and things. And I've seen people really drop some serious weight. And I mean, I don't mean like 10 pounds or 50. I mean, I'm talking like life changing, looking totally different. And again, if you have that technology available to you, why would you not use it? Absolutely. And you're correct on everything that you said. So Sadly, our country is ran by big pharma and insurance companies. Statistically, for every congressperson we have, there are 24 lobbyists behind them. So money filters in. Big pharma is a billion-dollar industry. So, And we're taught in Western medicine. I mean, in medical school, they didn't teach me about peptides or how to prevent and actually sit down and listen to the patient. So I think that's what sets me aside from others is – you know, I went into medicine at 18. I was in active duty military as a medical corpsman and a combat medic. And so I've worked in all avenues of medicine, but been bedside as a nurse practitioner. So I got to not just be in the book part, but actually doing hands-on. So 
you've got to listen to what people's needs are. So when you come to me, I'm not just drawing labs and looking at them and then, okay, here's your cookie cutter plan. And that's what a lot of these wellness testosterone centers are doing is they've got a set plan. You're going to come in. Yes, I'm going to get your numbers here to here. Here's your plan. And you don't see the doctor again. You know, that's the number one complaint when people come to me from another center is they will say, you know, I, I came in, got my labs. I sat with what I think a nurse practitioner. She went over everything. I got put on a plan. My drugs now come to the house. Nobody's checked my labs again. I don't know what to expect. You know, There's that kind of thing. There's not that bedside care that goes with it. No. So when you come in and I, I sit with patients, I first have a questionnaire just to kind of, so sometimes people are problem unaware. They know I don't feel my best self, but I don't know what's wrong. My primary care has put me on two different antidepressants. You know, I struggle after I get home from working all day to be able to be a great father, to be a good spouse. I'm tired. I don't want to go to the gym. I just want to go to the couch. And nobody's looking at the bigger picture. So first, I sit and listen, like really listen, you know, and it's not about people are a problem unaware. They don't know that their hormones are low or that this vitamin deficiency is causing this. They just know I feel like poo. That's it. So I want to be able to be a good husband, you know, and it turns into intimacy problems in the bedroom, which, you know, leads to more things. So I listen to what the patient says. As I'm sitting here and my microphone is like starting to wilt down (laughs) over on here, right? So I'm going to touch on that subject as well, too. Like, so... It's, a lot of people know I used to own a supplement company, right? Yes. And a big piece of that was what we used to call boner pills, yep. right? So we're fixing, you know, um, hard problems, That's right? right. Um, That's right. And we're, we're fixing problems. And it's a discussion that a lot of men, especially, like, they don't want to talk about. Correct. Um you know, and well, this that's is, your manhood. Is is, you know, that's the essence of a male, and you feel less yeah. of a man that you can't perform for your partner. And then, inevitably, I have men, young and older, to sit across from me and will tell me, you know, I'm in love with my spouse. They're the most attractive thing. I'm not cheating, but I can't, you know, perform in the bedroom, and therefore now she or he thinks I'm cheating. And it turns into not just, you know, a little thing, it turns into life changing, you know, their family dynamics are changing They're you know, you're going to work. So absolutely. And again, it comes back to the problem unaware and why you should seek out a medically based program, not yeah. somebody who's uh, working out in the gym that tells Bob over here, like, hey, bro, you should be on this, you know, pump it up. Right. No, you want to go to a medical provider who's had experience. So Street meds. That's yeah. right. Oh, hey, you should be put running this. Oh, yeah, you cycle on and like off this. Like in a bathtub. Correct. So I th- that's another thing, too, is, again, it's gotten a bad stigma, I think, because of that. But you know, the thing is, is that as we've advanced along with technology here, we're seeing that, you know, you, you just follow the numbers, right? I mean, you get the blood work, you follow the numbers. Now, I would say there's a good 80-20 mixture of working with you because you also, like, you know how you feel at your best. Like, so my estrogen runs sometimes a little bit high. I feel better that way. Correct. I feel like more alert, you know, and, and it's, you'll ask, you know, are you having any kind of um, issues or anything like that? Because sometimes if you're too high on one thing or whatever, it, it kind of leads the roadmap to what's going on. This is where, again, I feel like because you're so engaged with your client that you really listen to how they feel and how their quality of life is. And you're providing answers to you know to their questions and how to be able to get to that um you know when you walk into the place it's super nice i mean like you got the whole coffee bar set up i know like we've done our get me like sampling coffees (laughs) as i'm getting amped up on caffeine so your protein and your caffeine together (laughs) yeah no people said oh jen you're making everything healthy yes yes because i want your quality to be there so if you can't respect and you know i lead the way and this is you know what you should be doing then you shouldn't be in it so you i'll 
rewind back to where you asked me about getting into it. So I basically over the last 20 years have taken all of my medical experience, watch patients, you know, this worked well, coming from working in the hospital, like, wow, these people are just getting sicker and they're coming back too. I feel like my purpose on this earth is to leave it better or make an impact on people. So it's not about at the end of the day, how much money I'm making, Same. how I, much I clout I have. Oh, Jen, you know, she's super power, you know, nurse practitioner did this. It wasn't about that. It was more about how can I impact people's life? So when at the end of the day, I can say, you know, I gave back and it's so much more rewarding to see a patient, you know, I've sat across from young guys like that have came back from Iraq and Desert Storm and traumatic brain injuries. Their life as they know it has completely changed. And with the traumatic brain injuries, testosterone is a huge thing that There's can fix it. There's a direct correlation Correct. with that, right? There's white paper studies that show traumatic brain injuries, you know, your frontal lobe of your brain that's responsible for mood can be destroyed. And these people are one step away from the grave. I had a young man, 25 years old, sit across from me and married, had a young kid, said, I am suicidal. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't see the purpose of living anymore. Checked his labs. Of course, everything was low. And we know based on the science that's been studied, testosterone can be a direct you know, help these guys with these injuries. Do his labs. I put him on therapy. He is now a functioning, got a job, happy marriage, kids doing good. Yeah. And that's where I get like the the feel good stuff. I made a difference in his life. I know he is now out there living a quality life where he would have maybe not been here. So it is about when you say it's not just about building the muscle and that's what people don't understand. It's about quality of life. You know, you want to be able to perform at your best. Getting older doesn't mean we have to like not be able to do the quality things that we enjoy. It's about how can I make this person back to enjoying those things that they once used to? I'm not building bodybuilders. So I think so people misunderstand that too, because the bodybuilder scene, you're not taking like 200 milligrams of testosterone, Correct. maybe like a day, <laughs> right? you know, or something like these guys are taking ridiculous and dangerous amounts Absolutely. of steroids, you know, like, you know, um, peptide, God only knows what they're putting into their system that, you know, arguably could have massive health. Of it. I mean, you see a lot of these guys, they just, you know, they clock out and it's because, you know, they're taking too much stuff. Uh, they're messing with insulin. They're messing with, you know, again, the different various types of steroids. And these are massive amounts. So, I mean, this isn't just, again, this the, the difference between this is this is therapy. Correct. This is like you're supplementing Correct. something that's missing, not overdoing it. Like these guys are cramming their pie hole with like 10,000 calories a day, Great. forcing, you know, like pounds of chicken down their freaking throat because – they're trying to get bigger and everything else. Um, there's this guy that I follow out on YouTube. It's Cali Muscle, right? I love this guy. He's just, he's a crazy dude. And I just love watching him, right? He's super entertaining. But he has recently lost like a massive amount of weight. And it was, had a lot to do with he was starting to have heart problems and went into the first uh, stages of like having heart attacks and things and he's a younger guy but this guy was i mean you could clearly see like this dude he might as well have just hooked an iv of testosterone up to him it was that bad right but the thing is is that as he has lost some of that he looks better he feels better you know like a lot of people don't understand that you know i would see a lot of these guys coming to my supplement store and they're just miserable you know they're they're just it was like a balloon that was like overloaded, ready to pop, um, that sort of thing. And it affects, you know, everything from your mood swings, everything else. And it gets, again, a bad rap. Right. So, you know, it's just like anything else in this world, right? You're going to have things that where somebody doesn't do it the right way and they kind of spoil the, the rest of the batch for everybody else. Um, but, you know, uh, one of the things that I also wanted to talk to you about is a lot of these type of hormone therapy places are really directed at man, like at men, Correct. right? So you see man or men or 
male or what, you know, something that is always directed at male. So the thing is that I've noticed with yours is it's both male and female. Correct. And, you know, women, there's also like, I have a whole understanding of, um, the women this yes a whole understanding because <laughs> yes. like when your hormones are off <laughs> oh yeah you feel crazy 100 yes. and you know if like when you have aunt flo that comes into town and stuff right you have where you know i i understand some of the more crazy i'm right. not justifying it but i'm saying i understand it right so the thing is is that women also neglect a lot of that kind of stuff and everything from weight loss to mood to you know to everything just cognitive type of ability and when they get those things checked out it, it's helpful with this and then you have also like i said the medical weight loss mm -hmm. which is massively effective Absolutely. Um, i have seen people like totally change as a result of this and again it's all monitored and you know Absolutely. that sort of thing but you know you kind of offer like the the one-stop shop with that stuff 100%. so you know it's it's a true rejuvenation or a wellness center absolutely um and one of the things i wanted to also ask you because i, I you had options if i recall right i think like you were being recruited by i want to say wash you and to to like make big money Correct. You know what I mean? Right. And to do like be in some really impactful positions on that. But you you chose to go a different route and you chose to be in business for yourself eventually. Um, what was the reasoning maybe that you decided to get into that as opposed to, you know, pursuing that route? Right. Again, I'll go back to it was the observation and, you know, because I, I stayed in medicine, continued to go to school and just kept educating more. And it was seeing that what we're doing in Western medicine, we aren't like people aren't living better qualities of life. They're just taking more pills. They're not performing better. You know, it's you go in and, oh, the blood pressure now. Well, all of these things are kind of adverse reactions to all these medications you're putting people on. It's like I realized that in traditional medicine, there is a place for it. However, I want to heal people from the inside out. I want to figure out what is the testing we need to do to see what is really going on with this person, be it, you know, an 18-year-old or a 75-year-old. Figure that out, do the diagnostics, and then see if we can't correct what's broken first, see how you feel, and kind of carry on through that. So after opening some of these testosterone clinics and working in the wellness centers, I kind of felt like I had a good grasp on it that, yes, indeed, you know, there are all these natural imbalances. And sometimes people, like you mentioned the gut, it's not that they have an allergy to gluten or wheat or anything like that. They may have a genetic deficiency of some kind that until you correct that, it's going to uh, present like it's an allergy. No, you do the genetic testing on it. You find out, yes, they have MTHFR. We give them folate and they live a happy, successful life. So it was more about, I want to heal people from the inside out, yeah. not just be giving them medications. And in the way that medicine's gone with insurance space too is, you know, I would get 15 minutes to be with you. That doesn't even give me time. Hi, Mr. Ludwig, how are you? No, there's none of that anymore in primary care. You know, you come to see me. I have 15 minutes to get in and out of the door. So you're going to tell me your one complaint for today, even though you might have 15 things you don't feel great about. And I'm going to listen to it, do my diagnostic and write your script and I'm on to the next patient. I mean, that that's not me. Didn't work I... Out. You know, even working in the ER, you know, I spend a little time patching somebody up and then they would go to wherever they go. I'd leave and go home and just constantly wonder, like, I wonder what happened. Did the person live? You know, what's going on with them? And I realized I truly have a passion for helping people to succeed and in every aspect. So if that's getting, you know, their intimacy fixed and getting them to that place, but it definitely made me realize that. I have to be a part of the innovation and the wave of the future, and that's not going to be insurance-based writing pills out. I mean, again, third leading cause of death in the U.S., medical error, and that's from drugs. Like, let's be a part of fix what's broken, 
get these people help. And it leads to, yes, it's not covered by insurance. I, at the clinic, I have a contract with an amazing lab that allows me to provide to patients the same test that insurance get bills four to 5000 for, I can offer it to my patients at cost for $150. Same test. Isn't that crazy? Like the difference in like what, what they're going to bill an insurance company as opposed to like what that, like that's the problem right there. Well, the other thing here too, you mentioned over prescribing, right? So again, I worked when I owned my supplement company, I worked with a lot of these different veterans, specifically trying to get them onto natural remedies, right? Because you would find that in a lot of these military type of, of, you know, centers, right, where they would go and try and get medical treatment and get better and that kind of thing, what they were doing, all they were doing is just adding to the problem. 100%. They would weigh them down with all kinds of different prescription drugs, and they would just be a functioning zombie. And these people couldn't sleep, you know, they their life was in complete disarray. I mean, you're on massive amounts of pain pills and then you're trying to take sleeping pills and then you're taking blood pressure pills because that's jacking this up and there's a pill for that pill, which is contradicting this pill mm -hmm. and that pill and everything. And it was a dangerous circle and it's of different still things. Happening. And that was one of the things with working with Chris that I had seen that Chris was trying to be able to help to be able to make that positive change to say, hey, yes. guys, you know, there's natural remedies. Every, everything even to like the the smells or whatever, right? The smell therapy or whatever. Like right. sounds so weird to me aroma saying therapy, that. But, but aroma therapy. Is, that's yes. what I was looking at, right? <laughs> smell therapy, yeah. aroma therapy. Yeah. That's what it Not is. Not like yes. fart therapy or something <laughs> like that's But right. as far as like these guys, I mean, like. I, I mean, I spoke with some of these guys and they were really hurting, man. And, 100%. you know, it, it really pulled something out of me that I didn't realize that I had. And, and it was no longer about me, like trying to be able to make profit. Like I went into that situation thinking of like, well, how much supplements can I, I sell? And I came out of there like where I'm giving stuff away because I wanted to help these people so bad because they were just so far off everything. And, and we had seen a lot of these guys, they would tell me, you know, like, man, when I started doing this, like this really changed for me and everything else. And it's just that little difference that makes the big impact. Absolutely. That's, that's it. Because at the end of the day, if you're, you know, if, if you're miserable, it, like everything in your life is going to be miserable. 100%. If you're happy and you're feeling good, like that's going to, transmit into your daily life in multiple different ways absolutely um you and know because of you and and that's why we're we're friends as you're a giver too and your heart and your passion and it comes through in what we do and the people you surround yourself with it's you i mean you have to have a passion and a heart for what you're doing and that energy and people get it like this guy is here to take care of me not just to make bucks at the end of the day and being a veteran myself and being in the military, you know, I put myself through college. I worked several different jobs. When I finished active duty, I stayed in the reserve so I could keep continuing going to school. And when that process was happening, I didn't have health insurance because for a female of childbearing years, it's like a thousand dollars a month just to have healthy insurance. I'm healthy. I don't have chronic medical conditions take medications, but I'm going to have to pay, wasn't in the budget, putting myself through school. So I had to use the VA for just preventative care. Let's say I'd get a mammogram. And it's I so was so... It's so bad with that VA care. It's like people don't even no, realize. It's like, so disturbing. Here's these World War II Vietnam vets. They have served, protected our country so we can have the privileges we have and the freedom and the safety and I went in the ER and I saw probably three patients, elderly, in their wheelchairs that were facing towards the wall. They can't move themselves. And I mean, it brought tears to my eyes. And what the is wrong with the system? I mean, they've given their lives for us. And you have somebody facing towards the wall that can't move themselves. It was just so disturbing. So you brought Chris to me, which he's an amazing human and so involved with yeah, the Wounded Warriors Project. So I've joined on board with that. Chris was very much a patient too um, in a lot of aspects because a lot of people don't realize like Chris was a victim of the, the military system. 
you know, like he was really put through, he was deployed, was, um, had a, a massive, um, uh, like there was some kind of a thing, I believe over in Bosnia or something. And he was actually like guarding, um, I believe Hillary Clinton at that time. And there was some kind of a, something that happened out on the ground. There was some kind of a, you know, a mini war or something that broke out on ground and he ended up getting, you know, pretty much a traumatic brain injury out of that. And, uh, you know, this guy, he came to me in the insurance business and like, I didn't want to see him go. Like he was such a good salesperson, man. You know, he was awesome. But he said to me, there's something bigger for me here. You know, I feel like God is controlling my hands and saying, Hey, there's something bigger. About God just about had me knocking over the Starbucks. Over hey, there, he's right? making moves. Right? Maybe he's trying lives. to tell me something, right? <laughs> Ease up on the coffee, pal. So, um, it's all that but, energy. You yeah, just it amazing, is, right? So, but um, you know, seeing that and then seeing the impact that he made, and then like our friendship, and it's evolved over the years. You know, seeing the purpose that this guy had was really it, it opened my eyes up to you know something that was much bigger. Right. Um, a lot of people don't understand the reason why I created Mr. Insurance was because Mr. Insurance stands for something much bigger. It's that that person inside of you, that identity that's inside of you that has unlimited potential. And I also, you know, I wanted to use that to influence other agents alike um, to be able to become a guide and to guide them around the potholes in the road of things that I stumbled upon because, you know, I was, you know, a, when I got into the insurance business, like everybody wanted me, man, because I was freaking Killing high, high energy. Yes. I could sell like, nobody's business and people believe in you. Exactly. Well, the thing is, is that I ran into a lot of problems uh, along the way with it because I didn't understand really how, this business worked and I want to try and guide these guys away. It's, it's like the bad contracts that you shouldn't ever be a part of. I want to keep them out of that. I want to be able to have where these agents can come in here that I'm a trusted resource for them, that I have vetted people that they can go to that I have personally done business with and my experience is there with them and that I can be able to connect them with people that have made positive impact on my life and to connect them with other successful people around the scenario as well, too. Um, there's so many different promises that are made um, in multiple different types of business with advertisements, you know, like different various companies. I don't know how many different companies that I have gone to. And I'm thinking that I'm getting this, you know, this golden egg and I'm actually getting fool's gold. You know, uh, that's what I'm getting. And there's no results. There's no accountability. And in fact, there's multiple people that have sent contracts over that's like, hey, we want you to sign up for this 12-month contract, but we don't have to perform at all. And it's up to you to figure out if we're not performing, there's nothing you can do. You're still locked in for that 12 months. Horrible. Well, that's not what I'm going to do with these guys. No. I wanted to make sure that these guys were protected, that they knew that, again, they could come to me as a trusted resource that I would help them, guarantee them, you know, let me know somebody that guarantees you getting an ROI on your business. I'll wait. Right. Yeah, I'll wait because it doesn't exist. I know what works. I've gone through multiple different channels of things that don't work, and I've spent hundreds of maybe even millions of dollars on things that don't work to get to things that work. And so let my knowledge and my experience be – you know, a, a guiding map for you or a guiding light for you to be able to make sure that you don't make those same mistakes that I made. So that's what that Mr. Insurance, it was, it was kind of like, I don't know. It was like, I, I know really where I was going with it, to be honest with you, right off the bat, I was trying to be able to, um, like I was visiting with, uh, my, my therapist. Right. So, you know, I go, just for mental health and Correct. everything else and like, you know, make sure I'm a, a good husband and I'm listening and, you know, I'm, um, and, and a lot of people, again, you know, they're afraid to take a look at themselves and say, Hey, you know what? I need some help. I need some reflection. Correct. I need to be uh, a better person. And I found that there was a lot of things that were 
damaged along the way that I'm working on healing. Um, and it has made my marriage stronger. It's made me a better dad. I believe it's made me a better leader um, to look at myself and say, how can I fix these different things? But one of the things that the therapist said to me was if we stripped everything down to the bare bones, if we took away everything from you, what are we left with? How does that look for you? So and that's, a and tough that's reality. kind of where this guy was born over it. here because it's like the hard ass with the <laughs> glasses. You know what I'm saying? He's got tats. Right. I and, love you it. Know, and the thing was is that it resonates with people, but it's, it's a marketing piece as well, right? So people see that like – I know how to be able to capture the attention of the audience out here, right? So I can do that same thing for you. I can show you my roadmap of how to be able to do this and how to be able to be very successful in whatever you're, you know, whatever you set out to do. 100%. And you know? that one of the mean, many reasons why I love you, you're a great mentor. And I look at it kind of like, for me personally, I'm in medicine most of us doctors and medical professionals, we're great at healing. We're terrible business people because we're not taught that entrepreneurship and, you know, we don't have business degrees. Some do, but I'm great at what I do. And so it's it was scary to make the jump from always working for someone or working for a big institution and breaking out and going, okay, I'm going to do this. I know I'm a great healer. I'm passionate about what I'm doing. I know that I always do a good job, but the whole business thing, so you have been such an enormous like mentor for me and a light and I can go to you. I trust you. You have vetted amazing people. And I look at it kind of like the analogy of a frozen lake. So frozen lake, no matter how, it's risky. So you don't know, is the ice like three inches thick or is it a couple feet? But I need to get across the lake. So you've already gone across the lake. Your Your path has been, you know, across there so it's like you have to i might steal this analogy from you just letting you, you know, know i want to go yeah. across the lake because i know the fastest path to get me over here to success and what my vision is is go here however no matter what going around the lake or going here i'm still taking a risk by following your footsteps because still i mean i could fall through but you've already trenched the way for people in your industry, but just anybody like coming on to the entrepreneurship because you've you've made the attempts at things and be it like it was a failure and it didn't work out for you. And you're not so narcissistic in a way of I'm not going to share all my failures, let these other people fail. No, you've came forward like this is what works. This is what doesn't. Don't make my mistakes. And you're saving not only your people, but like me from don't, you know, go broke doing this. You need to do it this way. This is the right people. This is the right. So I just am so grateful to have you as well as my friend and a mentor because I am like the person going across the lake and I'm using your path that you've already kind of, and even though I'm medicine, your insurance, it's still the entrepreneurship. It's still the business, you know, don't do this, do this. So I applaud and appreciate you for, I'm, I'm in the, I'm in, I'm going across the frozen, the frozen pond and I'm making it. We're in different trenches, but we're in this together, you know, everything with that. And I think that people get so self-consumed in to, you know, worrying about what other people are doing or being jealous or being envious or, you know, um, the people that are around us are all can be used as resources. We can all be there to collaborate and to help each other out. There's a lot of business that's out there and you don't have to take every single thing. In fact, I, when I got into the high risk business, I, you know, I got into it as kind of some things that happened to me. Right. So I got into the high risk auto because of, you know, I was young and dumb. I got in right and I got some trouble. Testing right? the water. Right. It's so okay. and I had a bad experience, but I wanted to change that experience for people that they didn't have that same experience that I did. And the thing was is that my business was viewed as the crap business. And I like to say it's the cream of the crap, right? Because <laughs> we got a lot of crumbs that are left behind out Correct. there. And these guys Those that are preferred and you know, like commercial and you know like they're just like they don't want nothing to do with this stuff they're like ah no we don't want none of it and they can't give it to us fast enough but we don't have really markets for 
that super preferred or this, you know, the commercial and, and that kind of thing. I mean, I guess we do kind of a little bit more now, but, um, but we use those people as a synergistic approach. We give that business to them. They're happy. They give that business to us. We're happy. We're great at what we do and they're great at what they do. And, you know, it's like going from a podiatrist to a pediatrician, you know, it's a totally different animal. Right. You're focusing on feet and the other <laughs> one's focusing on Babies, children. Yeah. Right. And so the thing is, is that, you know, we have, um, we've established ourselves in the market and we actually did it so well to where when we started going and looking at trying to be able to pursue some of these other contracts with these preferred carriers, they'd be like, nah, all you do is non-standard business. So we don't want nothing to do with that. Even though we could show this like massive on taking of clients, Correct. really good management statistics, of it, right. statistics that really were mind blowing that loss ratios. I'm like, so let me get this straight. So I'm going to bring you in $28 million worth of business. And I have, you know, a 10% loss ratio, right? Or we have a 90% profit there, right? So you're, you know, at the end of the day, you guys are only putting out 280 that are 2.8 million, but you're, you're making the rest in profit over there. Right. I don't have my calculator here with that, what that is, but it, it all sounds good. Yeah. So <laughs> what I, what I had looked at is, is like, it didn't make any kind of sense because again, these companies, they, they believe that like, once you've essentially let the dog roam the farm that you can't put it in a cage. Well, I didn't want to be caged. And what I did is I found an alternative route, again, through experiences, through COVID. COVID was a big lesson for me. Um, I'm sure you as well. The COVID was a huge lesson for me because literally overnight, I lost 70% of my business overnight. And I had everybody in my corporation that was looking at me being like, okay, well, what's, what's next? What's he going to do? Right. So what? I'm over here like mortgaging properties. I'm trying to be able to bring in reserve funds, trying to be able to just kind of keep people working, keep right. everything normal. Right. Survive you know? at and this point. I thought that it was going to be a very short period of time. It wasn't. So I'm off to the lake because I'm like, okay, I'm just going to clear my head out and I'm just going to go to the lake and you know, again, Compress, just trying to regroup, right. figure it out. And, and you know, at the lake, like COVID didn't really exist at the lake, right? You could walk into Walmart without a mask. And, you know, I mean, it was a little reckless. Like if you really go back and you think about it, right? like somewhere on CNN, there's somewhere like my boat parked out in front of Backwater oh, Jacks. Oh, gosh. Oh, then, I think I saw this on the news. The, the yes. the helicopter that was there taking video. I saw this. Yes. And you saw the SSR-22, my boat, right? <laughs> So like, look at these people. Right. This is COVID this is soup. Savage, and you're like, dude, you, you, are, you missed the memo over here. <laughs> these people have put so much alcohol in their body. There's nowhere any disease could ever live. Correct. Um, that is not what they're worried about catching. Okay. So, um, but it, at the end of the day, I started looking around at my environment and I started looking at where could I be able to expand to. And I was able to take a different end of the high risk. I was able to take, there was what I'm going to call the lower end. Okay. Which is like people that have a lot of bumps and bruises on the record. And then there's people that they're on the upper end of that, right? They have the exotic cars. They have a lot of toys, that kind of thing. The one percenters. Right. But then I wrecked my car. Right. And, you know, as, as we like to call it, you know, the eight minute Ferrari. Right. So I rolled out of the I dealership. I thought it was less than eight minutes. Was it, it, it eight might minutes? have been. It was really close to eight minutes, something like that. I wasn't taking inventory at that point. Gosh. But the thing is, is that I went through, again, those same rejection process. And I realized that something needed to change out of this. And so, again, I became that guiding light where I went and I fixed that equation I figured it out myself, and then now I guided everybody to where they needed to go because there's a lot of people that they have similar things that happen. And these companies, especially nowadays, they are not playing around whatsoever. So if you have a few bumps and bruises on your record, you're done. You're, well, and you're yeah, already I mean, you're limited just... to the companies that you can go to to begin Correct. with, with like an exotic or a super classic or, you know, even a hyper car or something like that. And, you know, another thing that has been, a, a big one on there is like people that 
will drive these exotic SUVs, right? Because they're seen kind of as like daily drivers. Yes. So it's very, very difficult to be able to get those insured, and especially if these people have problems. So we have solutions to be able to fix their problems. To help these people. And then I looked around, and there's all these people that they're out on their side-by-sides running the, the trails and, you know, and they're just Jack, having a blast. Riker, yeah. Chase. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Our kids out there. Um, and there's this huge community that goes together with this along with the RV crowd, right? People that like to get out there and to camp and be an outdoorsman and right. that kind of stuff. And what I realized, there's a whole different set of problems that go with this stuff. There's a whole different community. And it's ultimately led me to a very massive influx of business. And I, I, I'll be honest with you, I got on the phone and I started cold calling people just getting to know people. And I know people probably thought I was crazy. They're like, why is this president of this company calling me? You know, but I got in with these guys and I earned their trust and they send me a lot of referrals, which ultimately has started fueling my agents. So I've been able to spread that wealth because of the chances that I took and the... And you're an innovator and that's what sets you apart from everyone else. Like what you're just describing, you... You are the one going across the frozen pond. Yeah. You know, it's it's uncharted territory. Right. There isn't anybody else, and that's what sets you aside. And it's the fire within you. And I don't know if you follow the laws of attraction. And, like, that's a real true thing. And there's science to it, too. But in the laws of attraction, you know, it says to go ahead and, like, state what you want and where you're going. You don't have a roadmap yet that tells you how you're going to get there, but you put your intention out there. And your intention was there. I see these, you know, this demographic of people that there's, there's no insurance out there for them. And this is what I'm going to do. And you are an innovator and a leader and you have that, you know, where your end point is, you don't know how you're going to get there, but it's all about intention and, they say that proximity is power and surrounding yourself with people that are going places you want to go. So you, I believe, are good with to getting yourself surrounded by people that are going places where you want to go, being proximity is power. And so you're an innovator. And who cares who calls you crazy? Those same people are going to be doing the same thing that they've been doing that we've known of 20 years ago and have no fulfillment in life and their karmic everything will come back to them and you'll have lots of success and, you know, fullness in your life and they won't. So that's what people come to me and they're like, oh, have you heard about so-and-so? What what are they doing now? I respond, no, I haven't. Because when I left and closed that door, it was for a reason. And I don't care what they're doing. I knew it wasn't for me. And I had a vision of I'm going to do things the way that I think is right and good. And I don't care. Full speed ahead. I know where my target is. I know where I want to go. I may not have the road path. You know, I have the the footprints and the, the frozen pond of people like you. And I've been blessed to have some amazing mentors in my life and my ear that have, you know, one of my, my longest client that I have that you met said to me several years ago, he said, Jennifer, I mean, you're brilliant and you are in a window of time. You're not getting any younger. Mm -hmm. He said, you're at an optimal point where you need to to take the other path because you're old enough where older people believe in you. They, you can talk to people, but you're still youthful enough, you look young, you're going to still capture your younger people. So you, and I commend you for doing this too, because it gives you, us, a platform to help others. You know, you're providing something that maybe somebody listening will say, gosh, yeah, I don't feel good. I'm going to go there just because I know my doctor's done my labs and they won't do anything about what they see because you know, it's, it's not their protocol. There is somebody that's thinking outside of the box that's, that's, here for me, as you are too. So I, I think well, you're an innovator. That's when the answer. When you give to others, it, it really is an energy you're, you're putting out. It's, it's kind of like, you know, it's a magnetic wave. You're putting out energy, positive energy to Absolutely. one person. And then that's going to ultimately come back and return. You know, it's, it's like um, almost like tithing a church, right? 100%. You're putting out something and, you know, like you try to, give back to God. I mean, you wouldn't have it without God, right? But you have where you give 
and you ultimately, at the end of the day, you will receive. Now, if you're looking to receive by giving, well, then that's a totally like different. That. It's a it's a scrambled energy, right? But if you're putting that positive energy out there and you're genuinely trying to help other people, it will come around to you tenfold. And it's something I've had to learn, you know, like you We're givers. And, I mean, and takers are attracted to us. Listen, you know, it it's like so I have this this uh, person that that I'm not going to say a man or a woman or whatever, right? Because it would be too easy to identify, right? <laughs> but I have this this person. I keep wanting to say the gender, but I'll just say a lady, okay? Right? So she um, and I, we essentially we are a big referral source for um, a company, right? And all of a sudden, I like I've been getting good results from this company. Awesome. And I had these people go back to the company, I'd say, hey, part of the deal is you got to go back and you got to really hype me up, you know? So, correct. and I want you to put a review out there. Yes. And I started putting reviews yes. out there. Well, the company caught that attention. They seen that this was going on. Now, this particular lady, she wasn't returning calls for people for like, you know, at least a couple of hours. She was too busy. She wouldn't work nights. She wouldn't work weekends or anything like that. Now, I'm in a place in my career where I should not have to work nights and should not have to work no. weekends. But I will tell you, I very much do. I, I know and you do. So <laughs> they put me up as the preferred vendor. Well, this lady got super upset, right? She got super upset. And she called me and let me know all about it. So what I did is I offered her a job. I said, you can either beat us or like you can join us or I'm going to just beat the brakes right. off of you pretty much. Right. Right. So I said, if... You know, your ego is what is going to be the killer in your business. And that's what a lot of people's problem is in their business is they are they they let their ego outweigh their common sense in business or they try to get too greedy in their business and it outweighs common sense of what you're supposed to do. And the thing was with this, again, I offered now it was a little bit of a jab back. I'm not going to say I didn't get my licks in there too, right? You know, I was like, well, if you just come work for us, like you might actually sell some business and, oh boy. you know, I'd hate to be on your end where, you know, <laughs> you weren't getting any business and that kind of thing. But, you know, she was just like, well, this is a really difficult bit, you know, like I, I just don't have the help that I need and everything else. And again, I said, this is the platform that I create where I help these guys to be able to make sure that the heavy lifting is there that I take care of the resources around them and to be able to help them, which is why they can be able to focus on the customer and sell essentially. Right. And not have to worry about the heavy lifting off to the side. Now there's a separate VIP line, or as I say, the red carpet rollers, which is going to be their service staff. Okay. So I have people in place to be able to take care of the customer service. I'm not taking care of the customer service, all the time. Like I, I do to a certain degree. Okay. But I say, I, I pay people to be in place, to be there for you, to roll that red carpet out, make sure that Correct. you're well taken care of on that stuff. Correct. And so I explained to this lady. So now she works for me. That's awesome. Right. I so mean, that says a lot. That says she a lot. was big mad with that <laughs> stuff. Right. So, um, but anyhow, as, as far as, as that goes, uh, again, I'm not going to reveal names. I'm sure everybody knows at this point who's a part of that. But, um, you know, this, this has been like the same thing in, in multiple different aspects in business. I'm like, you try and be able to run somebody out of business, you're going to be the one that's cutting your own throat. Correct. You try to be able to hurt somebody in business, again, you're the one that's going to cut your own throat. Correct. You put out what you're going to receive back 100%. 10 times over. And if you're trying to be able to take people out, you're going to take yourself out. Correct. And there's lots of different choices when it comes, especially, you know, the the uh, hormones business. There's a ton of different choices, just in oh, the St. Gosh. Louis area, oh, right? Oh, my goodness, yes. But I'm sure everywhere else as well, too. They're popping up all over the place. So you're going to have to be where you define yourself as a difference maker in there. And I feel like you do that extremely well because you give a sense of care as where other people are maybe sitting back in the corner office or whatever and like sitting there trying Flipping to like through Facebook and yeah, TikTok. Like worrying about what everybody else is Correct. doing. You know, instead of focusing on how we're going to become better and deliver a better service, Correct. you're worried about what everybody else is doing 
instead of focusing on what you should be doing. Correct. And the biggest problem that people have is, again, they, they self-sabotage themselves or profitability-wise, okay? They're worried about making such a big profit that they forget about, hey, those crumbs along the way. Right. I can make a lot in those crumbs. I don't have to take everything and and screw everybody in the process. Correct. I can be able to kind of collect some of these crumbs, which is, again, in that high-risk business where I was like, man, I got made out like a fat cat. You know, like I did really well with this. We became wildly successful because of picking up crumbs. Correct. Yes. This is business that nobody wanted. Not only did nobody want, they couldn't give it to me fast enough. So that business, there was a need that was there. And in this business, your, you know, your business, there's a need there. But it's about fixing problems. Correct. And it's about helping other people. Yes. And when you become derailed by how much profit you're going to make or, you know, what kind of, you know, new Hummer I can stick in front of my building or something like that, then... You know, it, it really, it ultimately, you become derailed of that and you forget about everything that was once important of what initially started you in that business and Correct. what your mission was. Correct. Instead, you become self-consumed, you become greedy, and people see that for what it is. Oh, I believe it 100%. People, I like that unspoken energy that you and I both understand is you know who's committed there for you and who's not, who's in it. For, I mean, you just... You know, it trickles down to your staff, to, you know, throughout the, it's, it, it's, it's a either, buzz. Correct. I mean, we just, I was on um, a couple weeks ago here with Michael Haddad, right? Yes. So yes, he owns the Diamond Family. This guy has created an atmosphere in his building that is untouchable. I love it. And he I love his story. I listened to him. Like they're from he's such a good Egypt. Dude. Where, where are they originally from? I don't remember what he said, I, to be I, honest I, with I, you. I but just listened to the story. I know morning. it's. I know it's not from America or whatever, but his dad came here with nothing. Yeah. And he started a business. And there's a lot of these people. He was going to flea markets. I listened to the whole story. And got out there and phenomenal. hustled. And you haven't lost track of what the mission was. And, and be that's humbled. Why they're so no matter where you are, be successful. humbled. You know, this is where you started. And I think that's where the definition between people who are successful and who aren't, who are in it, you know, for the right reasons and and who aren't because it emits from your person without even speaking. Well, I'm in a, a season in my life where I'm removing a lot of people out. I don't want that bad energy. Correct. I don't want that negativity in my 100%. life. And, you know, I think that there's a lot of people that they kind of, you know, they lean on a crutch Correct. that, you know, their they bad lean behaviors. They good people that are going places and they just use and absorb them for what their own purpose is and then when that's kind of gone then they're you know over here but those kind of people will forever be unfulfilled because if you watch they go from you to the next person to the next person you know and everybody figures them out like these are your like bottom dwellers these. they feed off of the you know the success and brilliance of other people they're not innovators they're not out there for me i absolutely am committed to somebody comes in to see me. I'm not just focused on their testosterone. I'm not just focused on their weight loss. I want to see what is going on with you. Let's fix it. Don't put band-aids on it, anything. And then if you are like, I see professional athletes, they're already at the top of their game. They just want to be the best, better version, but then you have somebody broken. So I'm going to look at what's broken. Let's fix you, send you on your way. I'm not a cookie cutter telling them, oh, you're going to be on testosterone, DECA, you're going to be on Ibamorlin, and who cares that they didn't need that? You didn't fix what was really broken. Same thing for you. So I feel like we're both the same in proximity is power. Surround yourself with people that are like-minded, that believe and are going places where we want to go, and don't look back at all the... I think it's important to remember those that have done us dirty and how not to be that person. Hey. But I'm not bitter or revengeful at all. I've looked at it like, thank you for showing me your true colors when you did. And it just created more fire for me to be better. And There's nothing better than like stepping on a throat and like ramming it down that success <laughs> down their throat. And Great. it tastes so bitter going down. And I will tell you, there's so many people that I have come across in, in business and in life that have just, like you said, done me dirty. Correct. And 
the thing was with this, like for a little while, I started kind of like getting stuck on the fact that like I want bad things to happen to them and I would hate them and I would, you know, think like how I was going to destroy them or how I was going to become vindictive, right? So what I ended up doing in like, and I'm going to give you a circumstance with my supplement company, right? Mm, so yes. I was going to become wildly successful. I was going to show everybody that I was going to put out all these locations and everything else. Well, it turned out that these locations was sucking in the profit that the other profitable location was, mm -hmm. and I was expanding too fast. Correct. And instead of looking at how Sharpen I could your strengthen saw right here, right. Instead of how I could strengthen the core, I was already looking at how I could be able to basically impress somebody that was not doing it the right way anyway, right. So I, you know, I tried to open all these locations and everything else, and I, you know, ultimately I ended up selling the business, but it went from five locations down to one. Um, and the thing was is that that was it it was all about ego for me not common sense it was about ego and i had to learn that it really wasn't the right decision with that but i was trying so hard to, to stick it to mm. the other people that i was not focusing Lost vision on, like, on what you were there for no i was not focusing on what was good for me and what was actually truly good for the business i was focused on what I was going to do to sabotage the other person. And I was focused on other people and how I was going to hurt them and everything else. And it ended up coming back to bite me in the butt. And at the end of the day, you, you know, again, it's like I, I've had to cut a lot of those people out of my life. Um, and I still wish those people genuinely well Correct. now. And it took me a long time to get to that point, but it's a clearing effect that is good for you because if you're holding on to these these negative energies and, and anger and everything else, it's going to get you nowhere. Well, it, yeah, it, it's literally energy that you, you could be using towards your own happiness when you harbor the bitter, whatever. That's that much energy you could be pushing on to, the, you know, better things. And I'm sure you can relate to this, but it's lonely at the top. And I'm okay with that <laughs> at this stage of the game. Why? Because, you know, along the way, doing the right thing, sometimes you don't make friends. You know, you get called like, oh, you know, this, that, whatever. But I am at a point in my life where I'm okay with that. And I am okay with knowing that I can go to bed at night, sleep well, zero conscious, you know, I'm out there doing the best thing for the people that I serve. And I can look at my kids, everybody and with true, this is, you know, my heart is huge. This is what I believe in. And, and I'm okay with being alone at the top. That's fine. Anybody that truly knows you would know that, you know, you have good intentions, um, not only just for those around you, but, you know, just in genuine. 100%. Um, in, I, I wish a, all well, rule. honestly, the, even the ones that have done us dirty. I I look at it, I feel sorry for them. You know, I feel sorry that something hasn't, you know, gone your way in life and they haven't achieved a higher status to where they can get rid of their ego and go, wow, you know, I, I messed up. Instead, it's always our fault and we did them dirty or this. When really, no, we didn't. You just used and abused and took everything you could until we were done. And and I had to take it a lot to where I finally and said and, and go try to cross the pond and go, okay, I, I deserve better than this and I'm going to do it right. It must suck for that person to have to watch and to see the massive amount of success that is being accrued and that there's just like it, there's no care in the world that you're killing like you're killing life you're focused on what the end all be all goal Correct. is what the purpose is mm -hmm. instead of focusing on what the other people are doing 100 percent. and once you figure that out once you figure it out how to be able to follow your truth how to be able to serve others how to be able to do good for others and give to others, that's when your business will take off to a different when, when you start stop focusing on profit and you start looking at people, that's when your business is going to take 100%. off. 100%. And I've spent, I mean, 
last month I went my only kid free weekend to a conference to learn how to better people and learning how to d infuse. Basically, if you need X, Y, and Z, instead of prescribing you this, you know, supplement you need to take every day, I'm going to put it all on your IV. Boom. You're going to come in one time a week. I'm going to get you right. Like you, you're like, holy cow, Jen, was this like the mojo potion? Yeah. Was this like something for, you know, it was kind of like, I wanted to have sex all day. I'm my superpower. No, it, it was just replenishing your vitamins, but you know, I'm just the I became like Ron Jeremy. I know. I'm just going to tell I go, you. Like, I don't I, know. Was, I'm going to have to study this and see what exactly. I, I, I literally, it was like jet fuel. I know. Uh, I love it. it. And um, so last month, listening to these doctors that are, you know, leading the innovation that are going against the grain, you know, just figuring out science and how can we help people with a central diet, exercise, not all these big pharmaceuticals. And then I just came back last weekend from Austin and, and, I don't even think about all those old people that did us ugly. I'm surrounding myself with people that are making a difference and an impact in people's lives. And we're all going to go to a good place. So well, let me relate this to this. And then I actually want to touch on something. And then we're running short on time. So talk, we talk, have, talk. we have, um, so there's a, a saying, good credit replaces bad credit, right? And I think that that has a lot to do when it comes to relationships as well, too. When you involve yourself with good people that are wanting to be able to see you succeed and ones that aren't trying to be able to suck the life out of you, correct? you're going to replace the bad ones and you're going to move them out and you're going to go through a different season with those people. And again, you're going to clear out the, the bad and you're going to make room for the good and you're going to start surrounding yourself with good, good people. And Correct. I won't allow people into that circle anymore. It was very difficult for me to yes. be able to push some people out. Some people that I thought were some of my best friends were actually my biggest haters. 100%. You and turned your back. and People it, that it, I consider it, like my family, people right? that were at it's like sad. my kids' birthdays and like, you know, that sort of thing. So it let hurts. Me touch on this as well, too, real quick here. So talk to me about being a mother and running a business and being an entrepreneur with children. And I know like our boys are- They go hard. They, they definitely They do. should be our poster children. <laughs> right? Go hard or go right? home. I think that might be our <laughs> karma coming back to us, right? I know. So it's not easy. It hasn't been easy. And I knew it wasn't going to be just my biggest- thing for me is time. You know, I need another 24 hours in the day just because I am OCD perfectionist. I like it throughout. You know, I want the best and to be the best mom. I want to be the best, you know, boss, provider, friend. And I really had to, what you already touched on was go back and say, when I'm around this person outside of patients, who do I feel charged with and who, when I walk away from, I feel a life drain out of me. Yeah. And it's unspoken. And you found it too. I realized some real. people that I had close to me in their presence, when we were done, I felt depressed. I, cause I literally just took on all their stuff, tried to give positive back. And in doing so, I gave every bit of me to them and then they're walking away and so on this journey I have cut out all those people too I can count on one hand the people that I keep around me and you and your family are one of them I want to be around people that when I'm with them we're talking about positive things we I feel energized we're yeah. we're making an impact in people's lives which matters those people that are coming up to me talking about did you see so and so on social no no I didn't because the only thing I do on social media is to let people know hey we're doing this genetic testing now come in you know we'll we'll let you try testosterone for a month free we'll do your labs that's what I care about what you know, I'm not looking at any of this. I could care less what Susie did with so and so and how they looked and zero, zero cares. Like I were I want to be around people who I feel yeah. energized with. And doing that conference last month, being here, I'm learning new things that and I'm gonna stick to that. So at Energize, that's what we're all about is helping people feel energized. Yeah. I hope that when people come in and they leave me energize your life. That's right. They that could be your new slogan. Right, they leave me feeling better than when they came in the door. That's that is success for me. Is I am going to leave other people and earth places better than the way I found it. 
that's awesome. Well, I appreciate you being on here. No, it's an we're, honor. We're kind of like you. out of time, but you know, I wish you uh, all the best in you know your your new business. Obviously, I'm a big supporter. And yes, you are. You've um, helped me but, immensely. You know, I look forward to seeing you become wildly successful um, and just changing the game altogether.